Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Dixon Ticonderoga Our colors, their world www.dixonusa.com Learn skills for a whole lifetime of crafting on this season of Hands On. At school, home, or even in sports, each week we've got craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. And every project teaches a new skill that you can use over and over again. Keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. And remember, be creative. This season is all about skills for life, and let's face it, a big part of your day is spent in school sitting at your desk. So today we have some personal accessories for your desk. You can even use them at home. First is a mailbox. Send notes back and forth to your friends or create a message center for your class. Then it's a basic lesson on clay and making a pendant. Next, it's marbleizing paper for cards and tags or place cards for your desk. Last up, make a desk plotter and make sure everyone knows this is your desk. See you in the classroom. The next project we're going to do is a mailbox. And our little mailbox looks a little bit like a birdhouse. You can make this in any shape you wanted. And if you make a whole bunch of them and put them together, it looks like a little mailbox village. Uh, the main ingredients that we're going to need today are a piece of foam core board, um, squeezable paint brushes, and you can use a fine tip or a jumbo tip on those. We also have a glitter glaze, glue, and our basic supplies, a pencil, an X-Acto knife, and a ruler. Uh, our first step of what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the shapes that make the main body of the house. And you can see here, I've just kind of written us a list. We need to cut two three inch by four inch pieces, two four inch by four inch pieces, and two four inch by six inch pieces. And when you're doing this, you're going to use the craft knife. And the first step is to just measure out the size of the piece. So I'm gonna do a three inch. I'll just put a little nick here and just kind of guess how far down this side, three inch by four inch. So then I'll measure this way. There's four inches. And then we just want to join our lines. And if you line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the foam board, then you know your ruler's going to be sitting really straight. So after you draw those lines, Next, you're going to use the craft knife, and this can be a little bit tricky, so we suggest having some adult supervision. And I like to use the ruler when I'm using the craft knife, and that just makes sure I get a nice straight cut. And I also find that I have to cut through a couple times to go all the way through this foam board. Just a couple like that, and this side. And just push firmly, and then it'll just kind of snap off when you're ready. Oh, I can go a little bit further through this piece. There we go. So these pieces, like I said, I've already cut out right here. And the next step of what we're gonna do is we have to make the little peaks that form the roof of the little house. So if we take one of these, four inch by six inch pieces, and I've gone ahead and I've measured where the exact center of the top of this is. So if I measure, it's four inches. So I'm gonna put a little tick mark at two inches. And then I'm gonna measure two inches down from the top on each side. And put another little tick mark on each side for that two inches. And then I'm going to join the center mark with the edge mark and draw a line. And that line, I'm also going to cut again with the craft knife. So there's the first side. And then I can join it 
the center mark with the side mark on the second side. And that's how we get the peaks for the house. There. Make sure that you use a cutting mat too because you want to protect the surface that you're working on. Our next step is to glue the house together. And for that we use this tacky glue. It's very strong and it will hold all your pieces really snugly together. So you'll want to glue the edges. It's kind of like building a gingerbread house. And then you stick the edges onto here. And you might have to hold it for a minute to make sure everything's secure. Oh, and look what I did. I just put the roof onto the front. We don't want that. We want the sides. So the little smaller pieces are the sides. These bigger square pieces are our roof. Okay, but it's easy to unstick because I've just started. All right, so we're going to glue all the pieces together. And then you want to let this dry. It probably needs about 15 to 20 minutes to dry securely so that everything's nice and held together. The next step once your house is this far is to paint it. Okay, so I'm going to set this guy aside. And I've already painted one over here. And you can see on it that I've actually cut a little window, and that's our doorway. So my piece was solid when I started. And I took our pattern, which you can find on the website, and I placed it onto the birdhouse or the mailbox. I traced around it to get my line, and then I used the craft knife again to cut into it. And this works pretty good once it's all glued together because it allows you to reach down into it and do a really nice job on that curve. So then that just pops out, pop it back out, and paint. So I've done one coat of paint on here already, and you can see that if you want to, you can go back and add a second coat of paint, and that's going to give you really great coverage and make a nice solid design for you. I'll just give it all the way up to the top here. This paint dries really quickly too, so you can do a pretty fast project. Okay, you would go all the way around, of course, and I've also painted our four by four pieces, and those are what make up our lid. And so these are the painted pieces. They would, they would glue on top right here. And for painting these, I found that using the larger brush is even faster, so it does a nice job. We can use the tacky glue to glue these into place, and it works really good if you glue right onto here, just like that. Place them on and you might need to hold these for a couple of seconds to hold them in place. Our next step is to use our great opaque markers and do a design around the front. And I'm going to turn it to the side or maybe even the back here, seeing how this one's wet. And you can see that the opaque markers will draw right on top of this paint and you can do nice little solid flowers. Our and I actually did a zigzag pattern all the way around and I added some details onto the roof. If you look over here at our finished project, you can see some of the fun details. The final thing that I did that I thought just made this little mailbox spectacular was put this wonderful glitter glaze on top of the roof and it added just that extra little touch and how great it looks. All right, final step is to put a bottom onto the mailbox. And this allows you to pop it out and get your mail out of there. The way that we did that is to trace the bottom of the mailbox onto a scrap of foam board and then cut it out just like this one is and then to use a little quarter to cut a finger piece in it. That way you and all your friends will be able to get your mail and communicate with each other even more often. Take a look at this beautiful clay pendant. Once you learn how to work with clay, you'll be able to make so many great things. Here's what you'll need. We're starting out with air hardening modeling clay, and this one is in white. We also have watercolors. You could choose to use regular watercolors or metallics. We're going to need some things to add texture, lace or rice. We'll use some metal wire, um, cording, and some small e-beads. These are optional. The other things basics you'll need are a plastic or a glass cup or a rolling pin, masking tape, a plastic knife, scissors, wire cutters, and a toothpick. So to get started, it's really important to protect your work surface. So I've laid down foil, and then I put masking tape around it so that I've protected my surface. Now the clay is totally non-toxic, but you don't want to have clay on other surfaces to clean off. So the first thing I've done is I've taken a small portion off the block of clay and I'm going to knead it in my hands till it's nice and soft. Because I put this wax or uh, foil down and you could use wax paper as well, it won't stick to it. So I can take my plastic rolling pin and roll it out and you want a nice even width. 
Another way you could do the same thing is to take a plastic cup and roll it like that. Now, on this one, to add texture, I'm going to use rice. I'm going to just sprinkle the rice on top, then I'm going to take this plastic cup and roll it in. Now you want to roll it hard enough so that the rice goes in, but not so hard that you come through the surface of the clay. Now the next thing is to cut our, our shape out. And you can cut any shape of pendant. You could also use a cookie cutter or any other shape to get the shape you want. So I'm just cutting a rectangle. And I'm going to peel away this extra clay. And as you can see, I've still left the rice in. Now there's kind of a lot of little rough edges. So I'm going to take the water and I'm just going to smooth it with my finger so that I get a really nice smooth surface. The more I play with it, the softer it'll become and the, and the curve, create more of a curve on the edges. Now at this point you want to take your toothpick and you want to pick out this rice because we're not going to leave that in to dry. So you'll pick out all the pieces and what you're going to be left with is this great texture. I'll just do it on half of it here so you can see it. And that will create the texture of your pendant. At this point too, another important thing is to add a hole. So I'm going to do it with a round toothpick and make sure it's wide enough to get to accommodate whatever cording you choose. And I'm going to do a little another asymmetrical hole just to one side on the bottom. Let's make sure that's perfect. We take the rest of the rice and then we leave it on a drying rack to dry for about 24 hours. Now, when it dries, it's going to look like this. Isn't that great, where the design is? Now, our next thing is, is we're going to paint. And I'm going to start out with my gold metallic watercolors. And I'm going to really work it a little bit and give it a little time for the water to soften the surface of the watercolors because I would like some really nice, dark, intense color. And you can make it as dark or as light as you'd like. I'm going to brush this over the entire surface, letting it go right into the crevices. And what's so great about using watercolors is that they're going to fill in those holes and you're going to get a great variation in the color. It's not going to be just a dark, solid color. You're going to have all different variations. Again, I'm, I'm brushing into my gold paint. I'm letting it soak in a little bit so it's nice and moist. And I'm poking into each of those crevices. At this point too, you'd also turn it over, you paint the sides and paint the back so that when your necklace turns around, it will be finished on the back as well. Now, I'm gonna set that aside and let it dry. I have one that's all dry here. Now I'm going to clean off my brush in the water and now I'm gonna to go to a, a green metallic. Again, I'm gonna work my brush in. These colors are so vivid and intense but with a nice metallic look. Now this time I really don't want to go into the crevices. I just want to brush it along the top. Now you can make it as bright or as, or as light as you want. And you can see, then you can still see that gold. Now if you wanted to blot any of the color off, you could also take a paper towel or just rub it lightly with your finger to get that nice, beautiful metallic color. Now we'll put that aside. I have one here that's all dry. I've cut a six inch piece of wire and I'm gonna just use my brush to curl it around. Put a little curl at the end. I'm gonna go through from the back, curl it down, and you can do any kind of design you want here. I'm gonna twist that to the back and then I'll add beads. And these are e-beads so they have a nice large hole. And I'll twirl that around so it gets to the top. And then I'd come back with my wire cutters and trim off any of this excess because you don't want it sharp on you, on your skin. And you can do a, short, a longer design like this or cut it very short like we did on the finished one. The last step is take cording, bend it in half to your desired length, put it through the hole. And this is why, remember when at the beginning I told you make sure you make your hole large enough. You're gonna take this loop bring the two ends through, and that creates your necklace. So let's take a look at the finished necklace again, and you can see how this is coiled around here. And then here are some other variations. We have the heart, where we've laid lace on top and done it in a red color. 
or the brown rectangle, and down on the bottom there are other freeform shapes using lace and also string. Once you learn this great marbleizing technique, you're going to want to use it in all your paper crafts, cards, tags, even gift wrap. Here's what you'll need. Choose any color of construction paper or cardstock. You're going to need a white glossy cardstock. It's important it's glossy. Foil. We're using brush marker pens in metallic colors and regular. We also have some metallic markers. And then on your basics, you need a spray bottle, scissors, a glue stick, hole punch, decorative edge scissors, some embellishments. These are all optional. So let's get started. I'm going to lay down my foil and then choose what colors. So I'm going to take my brush pens and instead of having a regular tip, these have a brush on the end. So I'm going to just squiggle some color around. We'll start with green. Let's add some purple. And you want to kind of just um, do some squiggles because you don't want the colors to blend too much. And some orange. Then I'm going to take my spray bottle and give it one good spray and take a piece of my cardstock and lay it down immediately while it's still wet. Now I want to press that down really nice and evenly and then lift it up from one corner. And I have this beautiful marbleized effect. But maybe I want to lay that down again and get the rest of the color. And you can make it as small or as large as you'd like. And there's our mar marbleized effect. I'm going to lay this aside to dry. Now you don't have to use the whole piece, you may choose different portions to use. I've got one here that's dry. The next thing I want to do is add the metallics. So on this one, let's add some green metallic. So I'm going to put this teal color down and then also let's add a little bit of gold. You can use this technique with just about any color. Give it another spray. And now I'm going to take my card and lay it back down. This time I'm only going to do it once just to add that touch of metallics on top. Now if I've got a little bit of smear here and I want to take that out or I like the way that little design came there, I can always lay it down and smooth my color out again. You could even use a brayer on top to to roll it down. Now I'm going to leave this dry and when you're done it's going to come out something like this. No two pieces of marbleizing are going to be the same. Now it's time to use your marbleized paper. I'm going to make just a simple card so I folded a piece of cardstock in half. Then I'm going to t I cut out another piece of beige to lay down and then I'm going to fit this on top. So let's trim that to shape, to size. Cut that down a little bit and a little bit narrower on this end. But keep all those scraps because you might use those again as well. I'm going to lay that down, make sure it's a good size. Now I'm going to go back with my decorative edge scissors and cut a scallop border. Now is the time to really get creative because you can do pretty much whatever you'd like with it. On this one I'm making it a card. There's all different decorative edge scissors. And you can go back now with your markers. I'm going to take a metallic marker and I think I'm going to take this kind of pink color. I'm going to lay it down on another piece of paper here and just go along the edge and create another metallic border. And even though the paper is glossy, the marker goes on and goes on nice and smooth. Now you can create whatever design you'd like. That'll show that off here or you can see here I've added ribbon. And let's go look at some of the finished ones. We've done a heart shape and cut out a heart um, tag and added some gold cording and put the um, copper color around the heart. On this little tag we've done it all in pink and in the blues we've taken all different variation of blue and actually made it into a thank you card. So you can do whatever you like once you create all this great marbleized paper. Our final project today is a desk blotter and it's fun, it's collage and you can really let your personality shine through on it because you can identify who you are and make it really exciting. Uh, the main ingredients that we're going to need are watercolor paper, white and black craft paper, we need metallic watercolors, um, markers, glue, and then our basic supplies are scissors, an extra large paintbrush comes in really handy, a pencil, and a ruler. 
So let's get started. Uh, first thing we need is our watercolor paper. And I'm going to take that extra large brush and I'm going to brush the entire sheet of paper with water. And you can use lots of water. There's no way that you can use too much right now because the water is going to allow all your paints to blend with each other. Now you can do this first step any color. This is going to be the base for your desk water. And what I'm going to use are blue paint. So I'm going to use the blue paint first. And you can load your brush with lots and lots of paint. And let's start at the top. This is going to be the sky of my desk water. And then let the color kind of go lighter as you get to the middle. So you can see all that water is allowing it to blend really nicely. Next I'm going to clean my brush. I'll just blot it on a paper towel to make sure I get all the blue out of it. Then I'm going to wet it with water again. And this time I'm going to get green metallic paint. And again, I'm going to get lots of paint on there. And now I'm going to start at the bottom and this is my grass. So I'm going to go really dark at the bottom and it's going to get lighter as I get up to the top and it's going to blend right in with the blue. You can add a little more paint if you want to. You can kind of make a little hill in there, a little bit of a curve where it all blends. Okay. The next part is really fun. We're going to take saran wrap and we're going to put it on top of this and we're going to crinkle it up as we put it on. And if you look really close, you can see that as I crinkle it, because my paint is still so wet, it's moving the paint all over the place. And what this does is it gives it a really cool marble effect. It looks like you're this genius painter and it's just so simple and easy. The important thing now though is to let this dry completely before you lift off your saran wrap. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this one aside to dry. And I'm going to bring this one over that is dried completely. And I'm going to pull off my saran wrap. And you can see that there's a really fun marble effect on there. And on this one, my sky is a little shorter and the green is a little bigger. No problem. It just makes a more personalized project. The next thing we're going to do is do two more sheets of color in the same way. And these are going to get ripped up to make the collage letters on your blotter. So I went ahead and I used just pink on one and I let it dry. So I've got a fun little marbled pink paper. And then I did one in yellow. So this is the yellow. And again, I actually I even used a little bit of orange in there so to get that fun color effect. Next step is to make the letters of our name. And you want to be careful with this because you want to make sure that they're going to fit on your blotter. So I'm just going to take a marker and I'm going to draw really big blocky letters. And I'll do T O R Y. And these don't have to be perfect, just you want a lot of room on there though to make your collage. Then we need scissors. I'm just going to cut out the T. And it's important that you cut this out right now before we begin the collage pieces on top. There we go. I can straighten out my lines that weren't perfect before. I'll move this out of the way as well. Now we're going to make the collage on here. So what we do is just really simple. We start ripping pieces of the pink and the yellow marble paper and we glue it right on top of here. And it doesn't have to be straight and you actually want it to go off of your letter a little bit. And so we're going to just overlap lots and lots of colors so that we get something that looks like this when we're done. So you can see that I've just kept adding piece after piece of the torn rip paper until it's all covered and everything's going to fall off of your letters. You're going to do all the letters and then when you flip that letter over you can see the original letter cutout. So now you just go back with the scissors and you follow the first cutout and cut it out again. And so once you've cut it all out again you're going to end up with a perfectly shaped letter like this. Next step is to glue that letter onto black craft paper and cut out all the way around it again so that you end up with your whole name done nicely like this. Now this little blotter that I did is a little bit smaller so you want to be careful that your letters are all going to fit. Next step is, before we glue this on, is to just draw in our hillside. So I'm going to follow the curve of the paper, fun like that, glue these on, top, there we go. And of course we did the sun the same way. For our sunbeams we just ripped long pieces of paper 
and added the sunbeams. And then down at the bottom, we've also personalized with little names. And for those, we just simply take a little piece like this and we draw words that are important to us. So I'm gonna write sweet on this one. I could glue this onto a piece of black craft paper again and put the words that pertain to you. This is our final project over here. You can see we put friend, sweet, sister, and happy, all great words that describe somebody. Now that your desk is personalized, how about learning some skills around the house? Next time, we're going to the kitchen and a cooking lesson you won't want to miss. Hope you can join us on Hands On. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is program 1103. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Dixon Ticonderoga Our Colors, Their World www.dixonusa.com